Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over how to graph systems of linear inequalities and how to show the solution in the graph and how to write the equations specifically from a word problem. So uh, the problem states that Stacy has $30 apps cash card and wants to buy some games and songs. Each game costs each game Y costs three dollars and each song X costs a dollar fifty. Stacy wants to buy at least fifteen items. Solve the system of equations by graphing to determine the possible numbers of games and songs that Stacy can buy. So I think one of the first things that needs to be done uh, in terms of priority for this is to identify the unknown. So I'm just gonna type that in here. And to be clear about this, um, the purpose of this is that when solving a word problem, deciphering some through some of the information can be confusing. So if you can kind of go through and identify what you're trying to find, then it makes things a little bit clearer. Um, so in this case, what she's trying to find is to buy some games and songs. So down below, the variables are listed. It says game Y and X, songs or X. So let's list that down here. X equals number of songs. And the variable Y equals number of games. So one of the kind of rules of thumb is that if you have two unknowns, you're going to need two equations to solve for them. If you have three unknowns, you're going to need three equations to solve for them. So in this case, we're dealing with inequality. So we're going to need to come up with um, two inequalities. So the first one to me seems a little bit clear. I'm going to go with uh, the $30. And she can't spend more than $30. So I'm going to start by writing... Um, $30 must be greater than equal... Um, what she buys and what Stacy's buying is um, songs and games and right now we can be more specific about that too we know that for each song it costs a dollar fifty so I'm gonna write 1.50 times the number of songs and I'm gonna add that to the cost per game so it's three dollars per game so this seems to make sense. The cost of the songs plus the cost of the games must be less than or equal to 30. All right, so we've got one equation done. Second equation is going to be, I don't know, for some reason it's, it seems pretty easy, but it always seems to be the one that students forget or people forget. And it's this second detail right here. It says Stacy wants to buy at least, so the at least is kind of important right there, buy at least 15 items. So if she's trying to buy at least 15 items, we know that 15 items and amount she buys, the amount of items she buys must be greater than 15. At least she wants to buy 15 things, right? So amount must be greater than 15. So now we're just going to place that with the numbers or variables because what she's buying, she's not buying t-shirts or, or chocolates or anything. She's buying number of songs and games. So the equation that we're going to write is 15 must be greater than or equal to, um, let's see, x plus y. The number of songs and the number of games must be total of equal to 15 or more. So we have our second equation. All right, so the next tip is now that we have these equations, we're going to graph, I'm sorry, the inequalities, graph the inequalities. You can do this by one of two ways. You can convert to slope intercept or... Uh, graph by the inter uh, graph by using the intercepts. So just a little formatting. Let's clean this thing up. Uh, here's this. Let's get the color. Let's go with red for this. And this is our another tip here. So we identified the unknowns. They were the um, x and y variables and what they stood for. We wrote the equations. This should probably be another um, tip right here is to write the two inequalities. And then now it's time to graph them. Um, so I'm going to graph by using the intercepts method. So the way that you do that is to plot the y-intercept. The y-intercept occurs always when the x value is zero and some y value. I'm gonna leave the y value blank. Um, and when you plot the x-intercept, and that always occurs when the y value is zero. So if I plug in zero in for x the first time, um, that eliminates this term. 1.5 times x is gone. 
So now I'm left with 30 is greater than or equal to 3y. In fact, this is kind of looking sloppy. So let me um, move this over so I've got some room and you can see the calculations going on. So here's our inequality. I'm going to plug in uh, 0 for x. So 1.5 times 0 plus 3y is less than or equal to 30. This becomes 0, so it's gone. So now we have 3y is less than or equal to 30, divide by 3, divide by 3 y must be less than or equal to 10. So the value 10 is going to go in there. So I'm going to erase, let's keep the red and erase the, the blue writing here. And then we're going to do the same thing for the y-intercept. So plugging in uh, 0 for the y this time. So I got 1.50x plus 3 times 0 less than or equal to 30. That's 0, 1.5 divided by 1.5 on both sides. And this ends up coming out to be uh, 20, less than or equal to x. So there's my x-intercept. I'm going to erase all that work because I'm going to need that space to do it again for, uh, for the second inequality. But I've got the points here. And I haven't created a scale on my graph yet, so I'm going to do that pretty quick. I'm going to make each of these worth 2. So we'll go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 4, 8, 12, 16. And that, that's good enough because I've got, I've got what I need here. So I'm going to do this one in red. Uh, this equation is red. So I'm going to put a dot at 0, 10. That would occur right there. And over 20 and up 0. So that occurs right there. Now that I've got these two points in there, I need to draw this line. And before I draw the line, i got to determine whether it's a solid line or a dotted line. And because this right here is an equal to, I'm going to do a solid line all the way through. And now the second part determines my shading. How am I going to shade this? And what we're going to do with this is because the y value is not on the other side of the inequality, this is not really a great format for us. We kind of want to like adjust this maybe to slope intercept form so that we can we can graph this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 1.5x from both sides. So I'm going to have 30 minus 1.5x uh, is less than or equal to uh, 3y. Then divide everything by 3. So I got 10 minus um, 1.5x over 3 is greater than or equal to y. Now, the important thing that I really need to take from this is just this right here. I don't care that my slope is kind of funky, um, but the fact that y is less than this tells me that I'm going to need to be shading below the line. So I need to begin my little sh shading here to kind of show all the solutions that would work for that inequality. So here's my, my rough shading, and that's, that's that. But what I've learned from this lesson is that even though I plotted the y-intercepts and it kind of helped me plot my line pretty quickly, I sort of needed to convert to slope-intercept form anyway. So I'm going to do that for the second inequality and uh, see if it kind of helps me solve things a little bit faster. So I'm going to write that equation. we got like the color pink here, and it is... Um, 15 is less than or equal to x plus y. I'm just going to subtract x from both sides. And I have 15 minus x is less than or equal to y. And that was actually really nice because my coefficients were 1. So I'm going to have a y-intercept of positive 15. So that's, here's 12, here's 14. So 15 is going to be right there. And I got a slope of negative 1. So I'm going to go, for every 1 that I go down, I've got to run 1. So I'm going to go down 1.5 over 1.5 just to kind of be on the same page here. And then I'm going to draw my line connecting these two points. And the benefit of this for me, actually I can't, my, my ruler won't let me get in that tight, so I have to go down another line. So down 1.5 over 1.5. Now I should be able to graph these. It falls right on the line there, and there we go. And now that I've got this line, i got to determine whether it's shaded or not, so um, where I'm going to shade. And because my y is the same format as this one, actually, no, y is greater than this. So I really care about this portion of it, and since y is greater than this, and we'll consider this our boundary line, um, I need to shade, ab shade above. So I'm going to... Um, 
shade in everything above this line. This is the solutions to the pink line. And amongst all this shading, it's kind of confusing to see where the solution is going to be, but it occurs right where the lines both overlap. So right in here, this area right here is the potential solutions to this inequality. And we need to look at only values that are realistic for us. So this is one of the possible outcomes. She buys 20 songs and zero games. Or um, let's see, another point that happens to fall right here is if you buy 16 songs and you buy two games. So those are some possible outcomes that we can determine by looking at the graph and identifying some points that are here. The reason why I'm focusing in this section specifically is that although these are solutions, you're not going to be buying a negative number of, of games. So everything below the x-axis is not a reasonable answer for us. We're really focusing in on this shaded blue region here. And uh, I know there's a lot of shading going on in this graph. I hope that doesn't overcomplicate things. Try to follow these steps when doing word problems and inequalities by first identifying the unknowns. I left out a, a thing here, but uh, create the inequalities by underlining the important values in the word problem. I, we did that in pink and blue. So we underlined important things to find the inequalities. And once we did that, we graphed the inequalities by either converting to slope-intercept form or by graphing using the intercepts, which I demonstrated both. And then just look for the overlapping section to find the solution to the system. So uh, I know it was a lot of talking. It was kind of fast. I hope that uh, you were able to take away some strategies for this and try to implement it and helps you solve some future problems. Best of luck.